Welcome to the second edition of the Tech Vault with Mitchell Sellers. I'm here today to talk about email and .NET, how we can improve the developer experience. Over the last couple of years, I've spent a lot of time working with my own team, uh, third-party teams, and otherwise trying to manage how we deliver email out of .NET applications. And a lot of things have came into this feedback and everything. I've looked at ways of how do I make my life easier? Ultimately, as a developer, I want to be able to do things quickly and easily, and I don't want to have to repeat myself over and over again. And email is one of those things that seems to be, you know, repeated project by project. So what we've done is taken a little bit of time and, and looking at ways, how can I make things better with open source utilities and what, what kinds of problems can we potentially solve? So one of the things I wanted to kind of start with is just, you know, what are the common things we see? What are the feedback that I get? Um, I get a lot of details about vendor specific things. You know, I want to work with XYZ vendor and they require that I use an API. Um, this other vendor has a, um, a RESTful. This one uses Graph. And I wanted to make a way to be able to be really quick to be able to throw out a new vendor specific implementation. I wanted to make sure to be able to handle things like templates and formatting. Other things like adding environment prefixes to emails or potentially suppressing emails by particular environments. And really wanted to focus on limiting the amount of repeated code project by project for sending email, adding third party dependencies and those kinds of things. And so what I did is I took a step back and looked at some of the common providers, the common communication methods that were being used by individuals and tried to see what I could come up with. And I found that if I group things into SMTB, SMTP based, SendGrid, and Resend as three different primary providers of information, that got me most of the solutions that we needed to do. And really what we then wanted to do is take that another step forward and really focus on creating an easy to use developer experience that allows me to not only do things consistently to be able to make easily unit testable code, but I also wanted to be able to quickly switch back and forth between different providers. Because during development, for example, we might want to use Resend, which we have access to for our own internal things, but our client may utilize SendGrid or our client may want to use um, SMTP. And so we wanted to make that process as seamless as humanly possible. And so to do that, we launched a number of .NET uh, utilities that are free and open source, um, and folks can use them. We have actually a uh, little over 100,000 downloads across the collection of these items at this point in time. It goes up every single day. And really wanted to share a little bit with the world today. Get your opinion. Is this type of stuff helpful for you? We see it as helpful. I see it as helpful. And really wanted to just make sure that something like this was made out readily available and, and get that public opinion. And so our goal with this was to be able to have a single iEmail service interface that gets all of our email sending methods centralized with full DI support. And then we want to be able to switch between our delivery methods by simply changing our dependencies and updating our configuration. And the idea here was to make it as smooth as possible to be able to switch between these individual providers, not having to go in and change every piece of code in our application and get some baseline support. We wanted baseline support for templated emails so that every email was wrapped in a nice HTML formatted template. We wanted to make sure that if you were working in a non-production environment and wanted to add the environment after the subject line so folks know, hey, this came out of development or this came out of staging, you can do so and not have to do anything individually. And what came out of this is ICG, netcore utilities, dot email, and then we have SMTP, SendGrid, and Resend. So what I want to do is kind of show you around, show you what these utilities look like, and really what we're looking, to, what I'm looking to do here is get some feedback from the community. Does this make your life easier? Does this allow you to save time and be able to do things in a faster uh, manner? Are what kinds of things are missing? What things would you like to see more? Because this is one of those areas of open source about helping developers and finding tools and tips and tricks um, that I find incredibly rewarding and beneficial. So we really wanna shed the light a little bit on what we've got out here. So without further ado, let's dive into our, our source code here. 
And for the purposes of this illustration, I'm using Visual Studio 2026 Insider Edition. And I'm working with a MVC project just because it was the easiest for me to set up really quickly. I've done two things to get the project ready to bring this uh, new feature into place. One is under the www.root folder, I created an email templates folder and I added a template.html file. This is the basic HTML email template. As you can see here, I don't really have anything in it from a fancy formatting perspective, but this is where you could put in anything that you wanted to put in, any disclaimers, footers, logos, images, anything along those lines that you wanted to include and have with all of your emails, you can do so right here. And so the idea behind all of this is to be able to, you know, really get yourself into that situation where uh, you're able to um, share that information and share that information um, quickly uh, with everyone and make it so that you're able to um, get that information out to the wild um, without having to make a bunch of edits. We then have basically, we need to complete our setup and be able to pull in our services here. So it's really easy to do. Uh, within our project, we can simply run the command install package ICG Netcore Utilities Email SMTP. This is going to take care of the initial installation of the SMTP uh, configuration. And then what we can do here is in our program CS, we can simply do builder.services, use ICG Netcore Utilities Email SMTP, and provide it our configuration from our configuration builder. What this is going to do is it's going to expect that we have configuration in any of our configuration means. So I'm showing you this from App Settings JSON. You could do this from environment variables. You could do it from developer secrets. Anywhere that gets into iConfiguration becomes available to this process. And there's two pieces of information that are typically there for our SMTP package. We have our SMTP service options, and in here we have our admin name and admin email. Behind the scenes, the system uses that as the from address, and there's also helper methods to quickly send the admin an email so you don't have to keep pushing that value over and over again. The next couple of items here then are specific for your SMTP configuration. The server, the port, whether or not you want to use SSL, the username and the password. These items allow you to control all of your overall connect connection. And then our last two here is always template emails. With this being set to true, that's what's going to go out and grab that email template. I'll show you a little bit more on that configuration in just a second. And then lastly, add environment suffix. If we're in a non-production environment, it's going to put in parentheses the name of the environment at the subject line of your email, regardless of what you put in with that message, so that you know, hey, this came from our development environment or this came from our staging environment. The last piece of configuration then is our email template settings. And in here, we simply put in our default template path. So where can I go find that template file? As I mentioned, I put it in www email templates template HTML, simply because that's been in a more logical place for our team to be able to go find those, manage those, and control them with all of our design look and feel. You can, however, put that anywhere else that you might want to within your project. So please do you know, take that in consideration, just has to be able to get access to it. Now, what's really nice then here is I just need to then be able to go in and send an email as, you know, however um, often I need to do. So we already have dependency injection set up here and I can simply inject I email service. And then if we go in here, Visual Studio is going to give us, hey, I want to add the using ICG Netcore Utilities email. We'll just do this as email service. And then now in here with our simple send email message, you'll be able to see here that I can really quickly go and send an email. So I can do email service dot, and then get my IntelliSense to work. That isn't going to work because you know that's the way things work in VS. Let's just go here. 
there is a send email async method. And our send email async, we're going to be able to put in our subject line. We're going to be able to put in our additional methods. Now, of course, Visual Studio's um, not doing the things I wanted to do because I didn't have this quite correct. So give me one second. The only email service and follow the default naming conventions here. My apologies. So now we can go in here and do our email service. Lovely live demos here. Make it make it great for you guys. So now we can see here we have multiple methods. And really, the key here is what do you want to accomplish? We have the ability to send a message async, which is allowing you to specify who it's going to, additional CCs, subject, body, all of those inf pieces of information. You also have the ability to send a message to the administrator. That is to basically send to the admin. That way you don't have to keep pushing in, hey, I want to send to this email address. We also have the ability to send messages with attachments. Um, so the idea here is those are your primary email delivery methods. We also then have the ability to have a custom from address. And we also have the ability to send with a reply to. And the idea here is, is that that admin name, admin email, by default, when you send a message, we're sending from one thing. With current rules with email, a lot of times we have DKIM configured, we have other sender policies set. So we wanna make it as easy as possible. These overrides with a custom email or a reply to allow you to override those on a case-by-case -case basis in different places within your application. So it'd be really easy for us to do send message async. Looking then at the send message async method, we have the ability to then put in all of our individual methods in here. So we can actually have, you know, our detail of who we're going to send it to. We have our subject and our body that we can put in there. And so really easy for us to, with one line with a single await, be able to put this information in. Now we have a number of other things that we can do as well. Um, you know, we can set CCs, we can do um, additional email token replacements um, and things like that. All of that's out in the documentation. But the idea here is I'm now sending a message via SMTP in one single line and easily awaitable async, everything's happy. So we can go out and we could run our application as long as we had proper configuration. We're going to see that everything is going to build and run successfully. The idea behind this project, though, wasn't just about, I want to make SMTP email easy. I want to create a consistent pattern, a consistent process, regardless of the email system that we want to implement. So as I mentioned, SMTP is what I used here. What does the process look like to change from SMTP to say SendGrid? Well, we can simply come down to our package management console. We can go and install our, we'll actually do two things. We'll uninstall our SMTP package. We'll install our SendGrid package. Okay. And we're going to have to come in here. We'll notice here this code is still working. There's no compilation issues. We go into our program. Obviously, this isn't going to work anymore. But what we can do is we can do use ICG net utilities send grid, still passing in the configuration. So very similar process. The only other thing that we have to change. So SMTP wanted that configuration. SendGrid wants this configuration. And you'll notice here that we have a couple of really simple things with SendGrid. We have our admin email and our admin name, same as what we had with our SMTP service. Instead of having a server username port, et cetera, we simply have our SendGrid API key because this actually uses the SendGrid API, providing better throughput, better overall experience with the SendGrid system. We have the ability to do some additional API keys. There's some documentation around how that works. And then we have the same settings for always template emails, 
always an add environment suffix. Here's the nice thing. I've made no changes to my email delivery. I've made no changes anywhere else. My project is going to be able to run and build successfully. So I just switched from SMTP to SendGrid by changing out my package, updating my configuration, and being able to move forward. What's really nice, we can compete, repeat this process one more time if we want. So we can go through here. We can uninstall our SendGrid package. We can go in and install our resend package. We're going to have the same process here. We're going to go into our program CS. We're going to see that this is broken. Use ICG Net Utilities email resend. And in our app settings JSON, I can come here, comment this out, and then resend you're gonna see that it has a pretty similar behavior to the send grid process. Admin email, admin name, resend API key, and then always template add environment suffix. So it's been really cool with this process for us is that by implementing essentially a different deployment service for each of these individual systems, we're able to switch around between them. Send grid brings in a send grid SDK, resend brings in a, a resend SDK, SMTP brings in MimeKit behind the scenes. So we only bring in the dependencies that we need. We only keep the lightweight elements within our project that we need, but I still have great portability. I'm not repeating template code, process code. I'm not saving a bunch of things with admin emails all over the place, but we're able to do things pretty easily. So this is just something that I've been working on over the last couple of years, contributing into the .NET community. Wanted to share a little bit. Would love to get your feedback. Would love to hear what you think of what I've done here. Is it something that is beneficial to you? Is it something that you would actually find valuable? Um, you know, within your projects? Um, and if so, that's great. I would really love to learn a little bit more about, you know, what you're looking to do and kind of where you'd like to go. So please do share, um, you know, your comments and feedback. If there's other things you would like to see, if you would love to see an implementation that is out there for a different platform, a different product, whether it be um, another email service or you know, the API um, particular functionality. We'd love to hear it. Um, this is something that uh, I really truly believe we've saved a bunch of time for our uh, users and everybody else. So please do um, check it out. I'll post in the notes here, links out to the individual GitHub repositories for everyone. And uh, look forward to kind of continuing the next time here on the Tech Vault um, with Mitchell Sellers. We'll talk a little bit more about other things that are related to developers and business. Thanks.